how dynamic processors can be related to do two different tasks. Uh, one, to reduce the dynamic range with the compression, that it's making the loud stuff quieter or making the quiet stuff louder. Uh, or to increase the dynamic range and expansion. In other words, making the quiet stuff quieter or making the loud stuff louder. Uh, between the two, compression is widely the most used in, uh, in our mix with our we are frequently going to compress rather than expand. For example, I have a vocal track and I want every word to sound like they're pronounced at the same volume. To start, during the editing process, I can use my DAW's clip so uh, thanks to some dedicated commands I can change the amplitude of, uh, of different tracks regions. And then, working carefully, I can set an, an, an automation. A great idea will be uh, doing what is called a vocal writing. It means to listen to our track while change with our fader the automation line roughly across the bottom of the waveform. If I want to make an even more refined work and we usually want it, uh, I switch to a compressor which automatically decreases volume as soon as the signal uh, exceeds a, a previously set threshold. Dynamic compressors are real based uh, gain controls. So expanders, gates, compressors, limiters are really similar one to another and they have the same um, components. They receive the volume, analyze it and work on it. They consider the average volume of a, um, a small audio portion. Uh, when they have that info, uh, they use it to control the fader of the outcoming volume of the components. Analyzing in detail the components of a uh, plugin that works on dynamic, we have the threshold. As soon as um, it's crossed, the components start working. The ratio expressed as, as number to one uh, between the incoming volume and uh, the outcoming volume uh, compressed. If I had two to one ratio uh, in a compressor, for example, the volume of the portion crossing the threshold uh, would have. Then we have the attack that uh, determines how fast the volume is going to change uh, when the sound crosses the threshold. And the release, how fast the volume changes when the signal crosses back through the threshold. About um, attack and release, um, the lower they are, the faster the volume fader will move. We can apply these principles with the noise gate too. Um, it cancels background noises in a vocal track, for example. We often have moments between between words or sentences where nothing's being said and the only perceivable thing is a feeble background noise. And noise gate does nothing but setting a threshold higher than uh, the noise but lower than our vocals and cancelling everything as soon as the volume falls under the threshold. So our performance is going to be untouched while the noise won't, uh, won't be perceived. In closing, um, a limiter is a compressor with a ratio set higher than 10 to 1. And it was used in the past, especially during live sessions, to avoid breaking the speakers or bothering the audience. And nowadays limiters are something like loudness maximizers. Uh, they take the beats, uh, flatten them out and then pull up the volume back. Uh, the goal is to make things sound as loud as possible. Modern productions often have the um, this distinctions of traits, uh, but the limiter doesn't increase the amplitude. It, it can just increase the perceived volume. Making things sound too loud is just going to kill that dynamic we often like, the dynamic that often gives life to the entire mix. Let's be careful and not use a compressors too aggressively.